So fundamental to the performance we saw out of the PowerEdge R7725 XD is software, and software is what makes the magic happen in terms of not only just aggregating the storage within the box, but being able to put it out over the wire with modern protocols, and that's what you guys do. We do. So, Mark, just two minutes on what Peak is, and for those that don't know you. So, sadly, I've spent a lifetime in storage, and most I know, of that I've is even a long time. For a long time. And, and most of that is developing features and functionality to get around the challenge that the hardware was never that great, okay. or not as good as we'd want. Today, you know, we've got amazing NVMe, we've got amazing networks, we've got amazing CPUs, and as we've seen on the Dell, they've put that architecture together In really one well. magical box, In which is actually box. kind of a unicorn, right? Because you often get all of one thing or all of another, exactly. but this is really even. They've balanced even. it really yeah. well. Yeah. And so our job there really is less complex, or, and ideally less complex. In fact, all we do is joining the dots. Great NVMe, great processors, great architecture, great network. Now the problem with that was, and what Pete really addressed was, storage has not evolved that way. Mm -hmm. And so we actually spent more time stripping out some of the stuff that we've been writing for the last two decades or three decades to, to really get it smaller and closer to the hardware. And in the, the example of Dell, I think, as we've said, it's, it, it, you know, it surprised us the level of performance that that architecture right. was able to deliver. Right, well that was the first thing, right, is so we're messing with this, this server, we bring in Mark and his team, get the, the software put on, and then you guys were blown away, yeah. which is rare, because software guys are normally complaining about the hardware. Yeah. This is one of the first times where the software guys were like, Great hardware. We actually we actually re looked at our testing methodology. You thought you did it wrong? I went, no, this can't be right. <laughs> like we'd never seen that that many IOPs. So you know, never thought it was practically possible. But they've made the hardware that's let us do it. Well, now you've got some new challenges, right? Because Dell's so big on silicon diversity. Yeah. I mean, I know we've all built around you know, Mellanox or Spectrum X uh, fabric and, and NICs before. You had Broadcom switches, mm -hmm. Broadcom NICs, which was new, but you still were able to hit the big throughput numbers yep. over the wire. So what kind of challenge does that make it for you from a, from a software guy to keep up with the hardware flexibility that, yep. that your partners like Dell want? And, and that is partly our job because that challenge, if we don't deal with it, propagates to the reseller or the user. Well, and but they're not going to. Yeah, they're not going right. to do it. And it gets complex, whether it's MoFed, OFED, and whether the flow control. So we really spend a lot of time dealing with that RDMA and how we make sure that that RDMA is supported up to date, working correct, working fast, so that the user doesn't have to. Now, that makes it look nice and simple. They just plug it in and everything works. There's actually a lot of work that goes on to make it. It's harder to make it simple than it is to make it fast. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and like making fast is easy. Keeping it stable and making it simple actually takes a lot of work. But you talked about this. This is the, your heritage. And when you and I met the very first time, mm. it was, gosh, at least 10 years ago yeah. when you were working on the uh, SCST driver That's right. stack, right? Yeah. Why do you care so much about the nitty gritty, as we say in the States, or I don't know what the equivalent in your land is. Uh, for, nitty gritty. Okay, yeah. that works, okay, yeah. fantastic. Why do you care so much about such low level functions? This is actually an interesting uh, question and a bit of a story. I had, after SCST and was acquired, as you know, um, I'd semi-retired, I'd done more storage than I ever wanted to do, mm -hmm. and I was actually consulting within the NVIDIA channel, trying to help them sell sto the appropriate storage solutions by right. all the names we know. The problem was, is those solutions didn't fit in with, with this new world of AI, as, mm -hmm. you know, as we call it, as it's wider than the name. <laughs> and it became so difficult to make those work because they generally were, at that level of performance that these new DGXs were delivering, would normally have you know, 500 machines with a storage team. Right. Now you had one professor de de developing an innovation 
who didn't even know what storage was, nor should he. Right, so they never had to care before, though, really. They never cared, right? and their focus is on developing the model that's going to save the world, whatever that is. Yeah, the science. Is. Go yes. focus on the science. And so, and suddenly, we, data was just an input, but it had to go down one wire or two wires to gigantic amounts of cars that was normally distributed throughout many routes before. So we realized pretty soon, that, uh, quickly, that we, we had to simplify that configuration to something that the average person would be able to not necessarily understand, just not care about. And so the only way we could do that was wrap it up and to take ownership of that problem. Right. And actually then learn all the, the new stuff that you know, Broadcom, Mellanox and everybody else was doing. Wrap that up so that they can just plug it in and play and they don't really have to deal with RDMA or any of the stack down. So that's why we ended up caring about the nitty gritty is because they don't. So why is it then, and maybe this is a decision just on, on business, I mean, PKIO is, is an entity, you've got the software, you can put it on it pretty much anything you want and it will work well and deliver uh, modern protocols, as we said, high performance, reliability, all those things. Uh, why are you not a function in someone else's product? Because it seems like you could have gone that route, conceivably. Yeah, and, and maybe that would be an, an easy one, but the reality is, is in this newer world, it's more exciting, okay? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, you now work, you know, we spent our life making products for people that make their, their service go faster and earn more money, which is valid and a great commercial logic. Right. Suddenly you're working with people that are developing brain cancer modules and it's more rewarding. So we've really enjoyed that journey. And as we've enjoyed right. that journey, we've seen it diversify mm -hmm. and grow into its own, you know, like completely different model and business. So how do you protect yourself from trying to do too much though? Because it would be yeah. easy for you to say, well, we're pointed at this, we're pointed at research and enabling these outcomes. But if we just added a few more file services, if we yeah. added a couple more data things and you know, all these other, now you're an array at that point. Yeah. And you don't want to be there, I don't think. But, no. but how do you think about where you go from a development perspective? So what we've really spent, and now it's open, that's easier to talk about. Um, we, 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 as you know, spent like with the Dell, the first X years, condensing what would have been 10 servers into one. Right. So performance, power, stability. And by the way, that is one message that resonated very well when we were doing this work. The concept that what you needed mm -hmm. four or eight or 10 boxes yeah. before one, one. Well, yeah. Because you never had that problem before where you get a GPU server that sucks all your power. Right. Before you had a few CPUs and you could have as many nodes as you wanted, they, you, no one cared. they didn't care. So the answer was just add another node. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we had this world where it didn't fit. You, you know, it wouldn't, it took too much power or it physically wouldn't fit next to an MRI scanner. So we had to condense it. That meant redevelop RAID, redevelop the whole stack. But then once we'd made this software that transformed amazing hardware that you can go off and buy on a shelf somewhere right. into a, a rocket, with modern day protocols. Our next job was saying, well, what if we join 10 of these together or 100 of these together? And again, in a face similar way, we, would, we looked at this with a modern approach and go, you know, the world that we've known, which has developed parallel file systems over the last X years, did so based on, I don't know, 10 gig iSCSI right. on a handful of SSDs and a load of HDDs. Well, which, which is funny though, because it wasn't that long ago. No. Like it feels like it was an eternity ago, but we're talking about a couple of years. Yeah, and in those couple of years, I mean, I mean if you look at Dell today, but, you know, 300 gigs a second on one box, two years ago, that would have been 80. And so the achievements on the MBME, the, 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 the whole PCIe structure, has just jumped gigantically, and it's doubling every time. Right. And then when you reach PCI 6, we're going to double again. So suddenly you've got this amazing ability within one box. Let's scale them down, or up, whichever way. <laughs> and so the challenge we had was that the traditional approach is to make some sort of proprietary way of doing that, right. and that's sort of easier. The problem is, is it's proprietary. 
uh, not many people these days want a proprietary option. Yeah. So we, we were really fortunate to work with Los Alamos National Labs who have been looking for modern day replacements of parallel file systems and want that to be a standard and an open standard. And so we, we've spent the last 12, 18 months working on open PNFS, which we're launching now. Uh, it will be completely open, so you can go off and make your own PNFS network, which is great because that's, that's what it needs to do to make a new standard. And we're really focusing on productizing that and making that more into a resilient enterprise type plasma solution. Well, I mean, it's, it's really amazing. We, we both love that Dell platform. Yeah. So capable. What would you want to see in the next version? If you had input on the hardware team, what would you want to see? Because it's such a struggle to allocate the lanes to the front of the yeah. box for the SSDs, because you need four lanes to get the mm -hmm. maximum performance out of those SSDs, and then the lanes on the back end to get it out. What, if you had a magic wand, what, well, do, you, what do you want? I'd, I'd, if we had a magic wand, I'd have more lanes, so we can have more output. Right. Or PCIe 6, that gives us 800 gigs maybe, or sure. whatever that is. Yeah, but it's funny, but, by the time you get 800 gigs, you're going to yeah, say, well, I want 1.6. I want 1.6, <laughs> yeah. But interestingly, what I was doing is I was looking at some of their other uh, products, I think it was 7745, mm -hmm. and looking at that again with a different approach when, wait, this, is, this has got everything you need in that box. In one box. And why, why can't our stack let it be a model, let it be an infant's box or a learning mm -hmm. box, but also be a storage box in one, as well as being able to join into a global namespace. So, sure. so in many ways, I think this is where we take what we already have, is we, we're, we're great, we've got the, you know, the 7725 and you can stack them, but I'm really interested in some of the Dell GPU servers. <laughs> What can we do slightly different? Well, your challenge there, of course, is fewer drives, yes. right? So the one you're speaking of, 8 E3.S mm -hmm. uh, drives, which is fine. I mean, the capacity is now at 30 terabytes yeah. and, and going bigger in those systems. But I guess what would be interesting from my perspective is if you've got the GPUs in that box, we've got our eight drives, what happens once we get out of that eight drives? Can we have something else in that fabric, yes. which I think is kind of where you're going, exactly. to expand that? So yeah. just, a, but but fluidly. fluidly. I mean, it, it has to be just part of that that data pipeline and the data movement. That's the that's the strength. Yeah, the, the simplicity and the dynamic, fluid nature of it is the heart of the challenges, which we've hopefully achieved. So the idea being, this is maybe your starter pack. You know, your seventy seven forty five. It's got enough storage for you to do what you, right. you wanted to set off. As you grow, just put a 7725 next to it, and we will automate that addition, uh, that the expansion, ingestion, yeah. and the spreading of the data. Yep. So, so that's a sensible step for those that are saying, hey, this is, this is an innovation. We don't know whether or not we want to change our mind. We don't really want to buy a 10 petabyte box at this moment, but what we want to do is not limit ourselves. So it makes right. sense that we look at adding that parallel file system concept with inside a single box. And one thing that you're talking about there too that I think is interesting, I mean, scaling as you go is a model as old as time sure. because nobody wants to overspend until exactly. they need it, right? And sometimes after they need it, and then they have to yeah. hurry up and, and make a decision. But the other thing that we're hearing is that the investment required mm -hmm. to buy premium storage arrays for these AI workloads is scary too, and a lot of them have been purchased for ease of use. There's a couple yes. of companies that have been really good at that. A lot of the legacy storage companies have been less good, less uh, dynamic in response to the, the needs of AI. You're trying to solve that, but you're also doing it without as much expense. Exactly. Now, now, I don't know exactly you know, what, what your your bill looks like at the end when we, because I don't ever pay for your yeah, yeah, software, yeah, yeah. You, just, you just give us the license key, which is the best model of all. But talk about cost a little bit and what that means from your perspective versus whatever the, the series of competitors is and out there. This is actually a really interesting point because if you take, and let's just use the word AI globally, right. but if you take a lot of that, you know, yes, you've got the deep training side of things and that's often big, but when they, build that out into a model, and I use the English National Health Service as an example, that 
that solution that they roll out, that has to be within a budget that's sensible. Right. And it also has to be within a footprint that's sensible. And a power consumption that's sensible. And maybe even be something a nurse could turn on in the morning. Hmm. They don't have a data center for right. this. You know, this is maybe next to an MRI scanner. So, so the economics of it are actually really important because you can't go and spend a million dollars on a, on, on, on a chunk of storage when you only pay $300,000 for the GPU server, which is really what's given them there the value. So that was partly what PKI focused on, was making it simpler for one, condensing the footprint down. But by doing that, what you're saying is you've got one piece of hardware more importantly, what the world considers a commodity off-the-shelf server right. that now delivers what would have been a very specialized, high-margin mm -hmm. storage product. Just for the product, not mm -hmm. even the services to not, stand it not up. Not even and, the services or the maintenance right. and everything they, we've traditionally got, got you on. So it's, well, just a storage, it's just a box. I mean, in this case, with like the Dell server or any server, then that, that OEM can handle tier one support yep. on any hardware issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a drive dies, whatever, you just flop it out and, exactly. and carry on. But then you guys come in for any more advanced software side needs, right? And, and you know, if there's any advantage of getting old in this industry is we've <laughs> learned our mistakes. So we've, we've already built in, A, obviously the stability, but B, the then monitoring right. and the predictive awareness of things. And I think in the field, in four years, we've probably seen two, two, two bug updates, which is not bad going for a company. So we've never had a downtime uh, because we're all getting on and we've all done this for many years. So it not only been simple and plug and play and understandable, it working and being stable was really what we spent two years playing with. Because performance is sort of easy. Keeping it stable Use, and may, is yeah. the hard bit. Yeah, so you guys like the hard bits. So PKIO is really good at doing the hard stuff. The hard stuff. And uh, doing it because, not just that no one else wants to, but you guys find a mission in this, yeah. in, especially on the scientific research side. So that's really compelling too. And I know in talking to the Dell guys with the work that we did together on this, they've been blown away. Mm -hmm. Because as much as you were excited about the numbers, yeah. I don't think they had seen these kind of numbers either. So that's a great, sort of bow I, to put on this. Yeah, and I don't mean this just as a plug for us. I've just never seen, we were, I think, 70 million IOPS on a raid yeah, at 300 gig a second or yeah. more in the box. And, and I've never seen that uh, within a single storage node before. And in that one node, we can do that work in the box. Yeah. We could do 160 gig over the yeah. the wire using the, uh, the, the high-speed NICs in the back. Super flexible, as you said, balance, I think, mm -hmm. is, was your comment. And... Uh, now we've got direction to see if we can beat this record and, and do yeah. more. Now, we, now we've got a challenge. And actually extending that you know, somewhat, just to give you a bit of insight, imagine now that we say, okay, we've got this amazingly fast box that where it's running at 300 gigs a second. What if we put the model inside that box? Absolutely. So it's not even using the network or the mm -hmm. fabric. Why can't we? And that's really probably one of our next products is saying, You've, you've made your inference model now. You, you've done it, so you, you need to ingest data, maybe you know, send it off again after you finish, but you, why take a, a large file over a WAN or a LAN, run it on a GPU server when you could actually do it inside the box? Because a Dell box could have a GPU in there sure. as well. So why not? And really, we've seen this level of performance, it gives us with the additional power that that box had left, and that was the surprising bit, we didn't use all the Still CPU. More, right. uh, it gives us the ability to say, actually, what else can we put in there than just storage? I mean, those AMD CPUs are wild, yeah, right? Yeah, really. the, the power available, all the lanes available, and then the extra little bits of Dell engineering on top to maximize the lanes yeah. in the back of the system. So we have our challenge. We hit the best numbers ever with this project, and now we got to go beat it. we got to beat it. All right, well. Yeah, come back. Next year. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Thanks, Mark. Great to meet you. Thank you.